7.7 .7, Write and Apply Exponential and Power Functions A Mathematician's Apology I'm sorrier than 1 over n for really small n. Lame. Let's go ahead and get into this fun lesson. What we're going to try and do in this example is write an exponential function of the form y equals a b to the x. That would be exponential because you see that the x is in the power, so that's an exponential growth model. So write an exponential function whose graph passes through these two points. So if it passes through the point 1, 10, then y equals a b to the x would be y is now 10 equals a, b to the x, which is just 1. And then if it goes to the point 480, I can say y equals a, b to the x. So now I have two equations. I have two variables, so I can solve this. Whenever you have two variables to solve for, you need two equations. Three variables to solve for, you need three equations. So why don't I just start by solving this first equation for one of the letters. Um, let's just solve for a. So we have 10 equals a, b. Divide both sides by b. We have a is equal to 10 over b. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use substitution so what I mean by that is substitute a equals 10 over b in this equation. So we have 80 equals a, which is now 10 over b, times b to the fourth. In other words, 80 equals b to the fourth over b is just b cubed. So we have 10 b cubed. Let's divide by 10. 8 is equal to b cubed. In other words, b is equal to 2. So now we have b equals 2. Well, we know a is equal to 10 over b, which is 10 over 2, or 5. And so our exponential equation is y equals a, which is 5, times b to the x. Note, this is our final answer. This does not equal 10 to the x because remember, order of operations say exponents come before multiplication. So the parent function is 2 to the x and it's stretched by a factor of 5. On this question, we're going to have to get our graphing calculator, so please go get that. What we're going to do in this problem is we're going to do it a lot like what we did with the LINREG way back at the beginning of the course. And we're going to put all this information into our stat plot. So we hit the stat key and we're going to edit our list. So just hit the stat key and then edit, number one. If there's something in your list, so you just go up to L1 and you hit the clear button. Do not hit delete. Hit clear and then enter and that should clear out whatever you have. Now just type in the data, one, two, three, four, five. Once all you've put all this data in, it's your decision whether or not you want to actually look at the graph. I'm not requiring you to look at a graph in this example here, but I just want to get a look at what this looks like before I start. So go to your y equals, and you first have to turn your stat plot on. So remember, you go press the up arrow, and you press enter on top of plot one until it's highlighted like that. Then you know that it's plotting. And then go to zoom. We want to go down to number nine, which is zoom stat. And if you press enter, then you'll see it's drawn. And this is actually exponential growth. It's not that obvious right now. It almost looks linear, to be honest. But they tell me to find an exponential model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to stat. And now I want to calculate. So go over to calculate. Before we were doing linreg, remember that? Well, if you go all the way down to the bottom, there's actually exponential. And so click on that one and you can just press enter 
And this is your model right here, 327 point whatever times 1.1 three about to the x um, and remember if you want to be all fancy you could have put this in y1 I'm gonna just do it again go over to calc go all the way down to zero which is exponential reg if you want to be all fancy you go to the vars you go over to the y vars function put it in y1 I'm not requiring you to do that but if you do It'll be all fancy, it'll put it in there, it'll draw the graph, you'll be so cool. All right, I might have gotten a little carried away there. But anyway, um, back to the problem. Predict the enrollment for the sixth year. Well, if you are one of these cool people and you put it in Y1 already, remember how we did that Y1 of six thing? Y1 of six? Boom, so we have that shortcut there if you are fancy. Um, if you're not feeling fancy, you could have just done, you know, we figured it out, 327 um, times 1.13 about to the sixth power because instead of x power, we're doing it in the sixth year. And you'll see that you get a pretty big rounding error um, here and the reason again is because we're dealing with exponential growth so this thing is growing really really fast so you'll see that when you round you're gonna get like a pretty big rounding error look at how different those two numbers are so for now I'm not gonna be super picky about it but as you guys become masterful mathematicians you do want to be aware of this okay so let me just recap I said y is approximately equal to 327 times 1.13 to the x power and I wanted to find the enrollment of the sixth year in other words I wanted to do y of 6 so if I was feeling all fancy I would have gone over to the vars and gone over to the y vars and selected one function and this is really the easiest thing you could have done and you would have done y1 of 6 because this is the same thing as f of 6 if this is your function f of x so this is really the easiest way and you would have gotten about 667 I think it was students and remember there was that huge rounding error um, when we did it this way. Write a power function of the form y equals ax to the b. Oh look, this is a power function. You see that? Because this one's to a power. x is the base and we're going to a power, whereas back here I was doing an exponential function because x was in the exponent. Here we're doing a power function, y equals ax to the b, whose graph passes through these two points. So when we have 4, 6, that's otherwise known as y, 6, equals a, x, which is 4, to the b. Our other point is 8, 15. In other words, y, which is 15, equals a, x, which is now 8, to the b. Let's do the same thing that we did before. Step one, let's just solve for a. So let me just rewrite it first. Six equals a times four to the b. In order to solve for a, I just divide both sides by four to the b power. So I get a equals six over four to the b power. I know that looks messy, but that's okay. Just go with it. So step two is going to be to substitute that a equals 6 over 4 to the b power. So we have 15 equals, instead of a, we're going to put 6 over 4 to the b times 8 to the b power. Recall that we have both of these are to the b power, right? So we have 8 over 4 
Both of those are to the b power, so remember we can do that? Look at that, now we can divide and we get two to the b power. Again, I could only do that because I have eight to the b over four to the b, they're both to the b power, so you can do eight fourths to the b power, eight divided by four is two. All right, now I really wanna isolate the exponent by itself, I'm gonna divide both sides by six. Now I'm just gonna move up here. Uh, we can simplify 15 over six, divide by three, divide by three equals two to the b power. Now to undo this, let's just take log base two of both sides. Log base two of two to the b power just leaves me with b. So I have b equals log base two of five halves. In my calculator, I can just do log of five halves over log of two. So we would do log five halves over log two. So we get 1.322. And then in order to find A, we're going to do six over four to the B. And B was our answer. So this is a really nifty thing. You see this answer key right here? We want to do six over four to the and I have to hit the second key because it's that color, answer. So that's going to give us what A is without any of that rounding error that we were talking about before. So again, this first step is what our B is, and then we wanted to use A equals 6 over 4 to the B, and B was just our answer. For our final answer, we want to write the power function. So Y equals 0.96X to the 1.322. Finally, in this problem, use a graphing calculator to find a power model for the data given below. Estimate the period of Saturn, whose mean distance from the sun is 9.54 astronomical units. And I should have put here that R is the distance and that's in astronomical units. And P represents the period, which is in years. So let's go to our calculators. Go ahead and put this data in your stat plot. So hit the stat key, edit. We gotta clear this stuff out. So go up to L1, press the clear button, enter. Go up to L2, so hit the up arrow, go up there, press the clear button, enter. All right, we've cleared it out. Now go ahead and put in your new data. Let's go ahead, go to your y equals, clear this out, your old stuff. Your stat plot's still on, so all you have to do is zoom nine. All right, so let's go to stat, and this time we're gonna calculate a power. So that's this one right here, A. And I'm going to be fancy, and I'm going to go over to VARS, go over to WebVARS, and put this thing in Y1. All right, so now when I go to Y1, there it is. I have Y equals 1, about 1, X to the 1.5. And let's look at the graph. Looking like a pretty good fit there. And then it asked me, estimate the period of the sun. So find P, which is my Y in this case, right? Because I put this in X, I put this in Y. So find Y when X is 9.54. So I'm gonna do my fancy way, second quit. I'm going to do Y1. So go over to VARS, Y VARS, function Y1 of 9.54. So about 29.76 years. 
again, I had y, which is p, is equal to, it was about 1 on my calculator, so I'm just going to not put anything there, r to the 1.5, and then I found that p of 9.54 was about equal to 29.76 years. So, can you figure out what the comic on the first slide is trying to say? Is the guy on the left saying he's extremely sorry or not very sorry at all? And that's it for this lesson. Bye!